Hello children, it's Grandma Carla, and I'm here to read some more of stories of the pilgrims with you. And this one is about Massasoit and the medicine men. And here's a picture. And the subscript says, a pilgrim father in his armor. He looks pretty fierce there, doesn't he? One cold March day, another Indian messenger appeared at the gate of Plymouth. He had been running many miles and his body was wet and his veins were swollen. English friends, come quick, he cried. Chief Massasoit, much sick, soon die. This was sad news to the pilgrims, for Massasoit was their best friend among the Indians. It was decided that Edward Winslow should be one of those to go with the messenger, for he was a good nurse, and he knew something of the Indian language. The messenger was in too great a hurry to eat the food that they gave him. He could hardly wait for Edward Winslow to prepare the medicines and food he wished to take Massasoit. Great chief, die soon, he moaned. Not see, not eat, for four days. Soon, the basket was ready, and Winslow and another Englishman followed the guide into the forest. Faster and faster went the Indian, until the men could hardly keep up. Often the guide was so far ahead that he was almost lost to sight. He must have thought that the Englishmen were very slow. He feared that Massasoit would die before they reached the village. Indians do not usually say much about their joys and sorrows, but Edward Winslow was told, has told us how deeply this guide grieved for his beloved chief. Often he would cry in his own language, Oh, my chief, my loving chief, I have known many brave warriors, but none so brave, so kind, so just as Massasoit. Sometimes he would say, Oh, Master Winslow, what friend will your people have among the Indians when Massasoit is gone? On and on they hurried, hardly stopping to eat or rest. It was now two days since they left Plymouth. The sun had gone down in a bank of clouds, and already the shadows were black and deep in the forest. The wind whistled through the treetops, and soon a fine, sharp sleet began to fall. It was a bad night to be in the woods, but the guide told them that the village was not far off. Above the voice of the storm came a distant moaning. At first, Winslow thought that it was the sound of a great waterfall. It sounds more like owls or the cry of some animal, said his companion. But the chief knew, the guide knew the sound came from the wigwam of Massasoit. And again, he moaned, oh my chief, oh my chief. Now and then a gleam of light could be seen among the trees. Presently, in a little clearing, they came upon the Indian village. A great campfire threw its unsteady light towards the wig wigwams in the village. The lodge of Massasoit was larger than the others. There were pictures painted upon its sides telling of the great deeds of Massasoit and his people. Before the door of the wigwam hung a curtain of fine fur. Winslow pushed aside the curtain, but the room was so full of visitors that he could hardly enter. The poor old chief lay on his cot. His eyes were closed. He could no longer see his friends about him. He is dying, said an Indian who stood near, rubbing the chief's cold hands. In a circle about the cot were five or six Indian medicine men. Their half-naked bodies were painted in many colors. Upon their heads they wore horns and skins of beast. They danced around the chief, leaping and yelling and waving their arms to frighten the sickness away. Poor Massasoit, no wonder he was dying. When the Indians saw the white men, they told Massasoit that his English friends had come to help him. The great chief loved Winslow and put out his hand to welcome him. Your friends at Plymouth are all grieved to hear of your illness, said Edward Winslow in the Indian language. Our governor has sent you some things that will help to make you well. But Massasoit only shook his head. He did not think he could get well. His mouth and his throat were so sore he could scarcely swallow, so he had eaten nothing for days. Winslow opened his basket and took out two little jars of food which he had brought, the Indians crowding around to see. But alas, 
The bottle of medicine that he needed was broken. There was not one drop left. Oh my. Here's a picture of all of the medicine men jumping around trying to scare away the evil spirits from the chief. He mixed the food with a little warm water and put some of it in the chief's mouth. Massasoit seemed to enjoy the dainty food which Winslow fed him and whispered more. The Indians had not forgotten the broth they had at the Feast of Thanksgiving. Massasoit will get better if you give him white man's broth said one of them. Only Priscilla knew what was needed to make and flavor that soup. There was nothing here from which to make it, even if Winslow had known how. So he wrote a note asking Dr. Fuller to send such medicine as Massasoit needed, and also a pair of chickens and whatever else was necessary to make a good broth. A fresh messenger sped swiftly toward Plymouth with a note. There was no fresh meat in the lodge, but Winslow must make a broth of some kind. In a large earthen bowl, he saw some corn. He asked one of the squaws to pound it into meal, and when this had been done, he made a thin soup of it. In the woods near the wigwam, he found some sweet roots and some fresh young strawberry leaves. When he had flavored the soup with these, it was very good, and the chief drank it eagerly. He was getting better. He was soon so much better that he was able to see again. Then Winslow bathed his face and hands and gave him a cool drink of water and bade the Indians to go away and leave him in quiet. This was just what Massasoit needed and he soon fell asleep. When the messenger returned, the chief was so much better that he did not need the medic medicine. Of course, Massasoit now loved the English more than ever. He told all of his friends what had been done for him. After that, many Indians came to Plymouth to get help for their sick friends. The Englishmen taught them how to make broth. They taught them that good food, fresh air, and pure water could help them more than all the noise and the dances of the medicine men. And here are some questions. Who went to see if he could help Massasoit? How do we know that the Indian messenger was very concerned for his chief? How were the Indians trying to help their chief? What did Winslow do for the chief? What did the Englishmen teach the Indians to do for their sick people? This is Grandma Carla, and I hope that you will subscribe and like my channel. I love you.